Calzone Spaceship. Curtis, why the mask? You know, I put it on, I like it. Maybe one day I won't want to put it on. And then I'll take it off. Has that day happened? No. Yeah, Curtis was, um, really, he had such a huge impact on me. He's probably one of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire life. And, um, he really had a huge effect on me. When we first met him, we were just interested he, in his appearance. And that's why we wanted to talk to him. We didn't care about who he was. But as we got to know him, we realized that he was an amazing person. So we, you know, wanted to follow him. So we were out there, um, we got a grant from the county to make a documentary about this endangered plant. Very exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah and it was, he was having a rough day. I, you know what, I thought I was, I thought I was having a good day. It was pretty, it was I not love, going well. I love nature. It was, uh, fun. You fuck not! Are we ready or not? Yeah, man, I'm trying, it's... <laughs> Come on, just get it ready! Come on, I don't want to be out here anymore. It's weird, I'm trying to adjust the, the light. You're trying I don't to know. do your job? Can you just do that? I'd like that a little more. Well, dude, you don't have to be a dick, okay? I'm well, taking time off to, to do this, all right? I'm in the middle of the woods and I don't like it, all right? There's fucking bugs and just come on, get it right Whoa, so we can on, get out of here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's something over there. What? What's over there? What I is that? Anything, hold bro. on, hold on. What is it? What? what the hell is that? Dude. Is that a man with a... Let's go check it out. Seeing a wolf would be fine. And seeing a man would be fine. But seeing a man in a wolf mask, we had to go say hi. We just saw him over the hill there. We saw him and it, what the hell is that? We ran over and we wanted to get to know him a little more. Hey so, man, what's going on? Nothing much. Just uh, looking at this beautiful landscape. Oh yeah, what's uh, what are you doing out here? <sighs> nothing. I'm just looking for critters. I uh, you guys want to come check out the fucking critters? There's like mad turtles and shit. We uh, we gave the audio guy the day off. It's funny, dude. You just come out here and you scream. You know, where'd you go? Just come out here and I like to say all my bad energy. You know, like, get it off my chest. You know, like my parents are bugging me. Yeah, get it out. Try it. Go. Come on. Hit it from your belly. Ah, hey, Carl. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, that was. That did feel good. Yeah. Fuck, wow. Carl. You're Carl. What the? Uh, what? What's with the mask? I gotta. I gotta ask. Dude, I've taken so much heat for this. Listen. Don't worry about the mask. Look at me. I'm a good guy, and I'm all about positivity and love. Curtis Jones. All right. Chet. Nice to meet you, Curtis. Nice uh, to meet you how too. How long you been wearing that thing? Uh, four years. Just four. You wore that mask. For, you haven't taken it off. Nope. Haven't looked back. What are you guys doing out here? Well, we came out to film um, just Peace in the Woods, and then we just kind of ran into you. What is that, an icon? So we ran into him, and this, he had been wearing this mask for four years. We thought he was fucking nuts, but that's great. That makes good, that's good filmmaking. So we want to follow him, get to know him, figure out what he was about and why he was doing this. We really didn't know what we were getting into. Yeah. But we got into it. A lot of it. It doesn't make sense that you wear a wolf mask, though. Makes sense to who? Normal people would what's, do. What's normal? I, I want to be, I want to do something great. I was put on this earth to bring out the best in people. And I can't be normal. And if I can't be a little normal, then I'll be a lot crazy. Here's my heroes. Let me give you a list of my heroes. Albert Einstein, Mr. Rogers, Harry Tubman. This is also a list of people that were not normal. Mr. Rogers, Albert Einstein, Harry Tubman. So, would you compare yourself to Einstein, Harriet Tubman, and Mr. Rogers? No, but I strive to be like them. I want to be as smart as Einstein. I want to be as courageous as Harriet Tubman. And I want to be as likable as Mr. Rogers. He started comparing himself to Harriet Tubman and Albert Einstein. At that point, we still thought he was fucking nuts. And um, Chet had this idea. Well, well we thought, we're gonna, we knew we were going to interview friends and stuff. But we figured we'd start and see if he... Actually, it was crazy. Or this is a thing that other people do, so we figured we'd seek out a professional. Yes, I am Dr. Artie Biscuit, Princeton graduate with a double doctorate in sociology and psychology. I also have a major in biology and a minor in restaurant management. Well, when you break it down to the root, people cover up because they're hiding something. They're hiding who they are, who they were, who they've become. You know, you see it these days with tattoos, dye in their hair, crazy dress. It all comes back to one point. And that's that they're all hiding something. And you believe that's what's happening with Curtis? No, no, I think Curtis is a fucking idiot. I like to say my day's off right. It's good to have 
a fit mind, and a fit body. I know what you're thinking. Does anyone ever yell at you for your appearance? Yeah, but I don't like to wear shoes when I play basketball. I just don't, you know? The day we went to play basketball, it was kind of funny because he couldn't hit any, I mean, he was all, all glass. Yeah. I mean, he was trying hard. Love that backboard. He was shooting around, jumping around, spiking the ball, missing, dribbling, tripping, falling over himself. But then uh, we asked him, how do you, what's a, show us how you shoot a basketball. And what he said um, was brilliant. It had nothing to do with basketball, but it was brilliant. You know, I like to look at basketball. It's shooting basketball as a metaphor for your hopes, dreams, and goals. Yeah, the mixer blew up, so we didn't have an audio guy that day. This is the act of trying to accomplish them. You have to push. Your dreams, your hopes, your goals, you want to push that. You want to accomplish that. You shooting the ball, it's you projecting, you saying, I want to achieve that. If it goes in that hole, it means you've done it. You've done the hard work, you've done it. If it doesn't go in that hole, then it just says, hey, sometimes it doesn't work out. But the big one like the best one is you always get to shoot again. You always get to shoot again. Check it out. You guys are making a movie about Curtis? Where the fuck would you do that? The day that you put that thing on your face, four years ago, what was happening that day? Here's the thing, it was Halloween, right? And I was not prepared for Halloween. It comes once a year, I look forward to it, not good at preparing stuff. Anyway, I'm late, I'm meeting my girlfriend at the time, at this Halloween party. He came to a Halloween party in the mess, that's how he started. So we didn't think anything of it. It's like any other Halloween party, bobbing for apples, and the grapes that are eyeballs, and the whippets and the mollies. But that was a Wednesday, and then Thursday came, and then Friday, and then Saturday, and then Sunday. It was weird because I was uh, I was on vacation. I had uh, you know a little vacation time, and uh, you know I was gone for a week. So apparently it started when I was was gone. Sunday turned into Monday, and then Monday turned into Tuesday, and look, we're back at Wednesday. So I was like, come on, man, you're not gonna take the mask off. Oh, so you tried to get him to take it off, and he was not for it. I asked him once, and then he just didn't take it off. Wednesday turns into Thursday, and then Thursday turns into Friday, and then Friday turns into Saturday, and Saturday turns into Sunday, and then Sunday turns into Monday. You know, at first I thought it was going to be a good thing. Okay, Curtis came in, you know what I'm saying? It's good for morale. Good for morale down in the office. I thought at first. God, was I wrong? But, you know, he comes in, he's got his wolf mask on. He's like, oh, yeah, go, you know? He can't fit his headset on there. People were laughing and loving it. People were excited to be at work. You know, that's good for office morale. But then, God, you know, just the customer service went out the window. The customers... He was disrupting the customers. But it's a call center. Yeah. Are there customers at the call On the phone. But then Monday turns into Tuesday, and he's still in the mask, and then Tuesday turns into Wednesday, so now it's two weeks he's now in the mask. You know? We went from Wednesday from the party, and then we went from that week, you know, from Wednesday to Thursday and Friday and Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then that's another week, and he just wouldn't take it off. So, um, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about any uh, romantic relationships you've had? I can, but I won't. Do you guys want to see my swords? I was doing a nose grind down this rail, it was real sick, but I busted my shin and I fell, and this guy, who turned out to be Curtis, came up to me and sort of gave me mouth to mouth, which at the time I thought was kind of cute, but I think today he thought that was going to help my shin. Sometimes you're in love, sometimes you're out of love. We were supposed to believe that it lasts forever, but maybe it comes in waves. You can love somebody, but maybe you're not, it's not supposed to be eternal. Like, like that idea of like, I'm always gonna love you. That's a strong commitment, you know? I'm not even fucking committed to this mask. I'm not always gonna wear this mask. When am I gonna take it off? I think, I don't know. Today I wanna keep it on. So when I think of love, it's like, instead of saying I'll love you forever, I think every day you should greet the person you love and say, today I love you. And see how long you can do that. Yeah, Judy Truck was a bitch. Big dad. Yeah. If you guys want to see more skating, you gotta pay me. Later. This is how a samurai would teach a young samurai life. Huh? Huh? Come on. The man just has swords. Why? Yeah, why does he have swords? It's not even... They're not fake, they're not toys. They're genuine... I don't even know where he got them. Remember this? I started doing this pumping thing with the... This 
Doesn't have to be vagina. Equal rights, same sex marriages. That's all I'm saying. So he's got tense and then simulating sex with a deadly weapon. Yeah. It's a little scary. But that actually does, because that goes into, you know, we were curious how the hell did he get these things? Because he doesn't look like he has a lot of money and they look, you know, nice swords. So we asked him what he did for a living. I make money through certain outlets. I hand out flyers. I uh, deliver food to people. Uh, I play, play music in the streets, you know? Okay, but what, what, have you ever worked with other people? I worked at a call center. We run a uh, call center. It's called Dust Solutions. We uh, have your solutions. Solutions for what? Problems. Like you got, you got, what do you do? You got to make these movies here? That's your job? Is that your living? Yeah. Okay, you run into some problems, you call us. We have the solutions. We have all your solutions for your problems, for your business. Yeah. Um, so you can make more money. It's kind of like we help, like you got to help us help you. And then we all, you know, we make money. I got you. So, uh, that's the solution. Yeah. Okay, was there any really big event that led to him being fired? But yeah, he embarrassed the company, man. Can you tell us about that? Big wigs are in town from Wichita, all right? It's up to old Brad's slogan to show him how we do here at Dust Solutions. Uh, so I organize a team building exercise, go to a karaoke bar down the street, uh, my buddy Johnny, he was Johnny's karaoke. So we go down there and I think, hey, let's sing some songs and let's do some shots. We're drinking, everyone's having a good time, and uh, it, was, it was a good night, you know, we, we had some, some good karaoke going. Uh, I started off singing a little Backstreet Boys. Uh, Steve from Wichita jumped in, actually did a good uh, Axl Rose. But then, uh, then Curtis came up, man. What's a band that everyone likes? Go. Duran Duran. Yeah. Yes! Hungry Like a Wolf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get it with the wolf mask. Yeah, he played it uh, 16 times. I can handle Duran and Duran. Maybe even another Duran, but not Duran, 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 Duran. Is anything about a good joke? If you do it once, and you get a laugh, you do it over and over and over and over. You see, what you guys have to understand, nobody knew this. Steve from Wichita, his kid, was, uh killed in a wolf accident. I don't know if you guys know, I've been to Wichita, the bad wolf problem there. And uh, his kid was out playing and uh, these freaking wolves chewed him up, man, like a freaking piece of spaghetti or something. I don't know, it was, it was ugly. He, uh... Curtis up there singing Hungry Like the Wolf, you know, he's singing up there, Hungry Like the Wolf. I'm hungry like a wolf. I don't know the words. And every time he says it, you know, I see it in Steve's face. It's like he's seeing his kid get like, you know, raped and chewed up again by these wolves, man. So I, I say to him, I go, look, Steve, this is, this is clearly a problem. I'm Brad Slogan. I've got the solution. Curtis is done. Yeah, we spoke to uh, one of his old friends, Don Kipson. Nice guy. You guys want to do some blow? He kind of explained to us they were the, like brothers, and then after the mask, their friendship just fell apart. Yeah, best of friends, and he tried to stay friends with Curtis, and I could tell it hurts him, but he's not friends with him anymore. Y you, you grew up with a guy for 15 years. I mean, he was weird back then, but... Not weird like this, like, you know, he picked his nose, he rubbed his crotch on things, but that was college. I mean, I, he'll always be, you know, my brother, but that mask. He's still a good guy underneath, it's just, it's a fucking mask. He just, he stopped talking to me. You know, he's married. I don't think it has anything to do with the wolf mask. Yes, at his wedding, he said, I never want to see you again if you're wearing that wolf mask, but he was drunk. The tipping point was my wedding. He showed up to my wedding in the mask. Do you know what it's like to have a best wolf man? My parents were there. My wife's grandparents were there. They've never seen this. They don't know what to expect. They're from the old country. Curtis is the kind of guy who, who finds the best in everything, so I just, I, I just wish him nothing but happiness and him to find that thing that he loves and hold on with both hands, because that's just his nature. I just want him to find love. And to take the fucking mask off. He made some new friends. Remember? Petey? Oh, Petey. Oh, oh my god. Petey Peppercorn. Fucking Petey. insane. So, wh why don't you have a problem with him wearing the mask? Because everybody is sort of out there in the world just trying to make it, you know? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't make a movie about Petey because I feel like I wouldn't survive. There's got to be a whole dark world of shit and issues underneath that man's surface. I don't mind the mask. He's well groomed. He takes care of it. He uses Garnier Fructis on the top. Um, he's crazy. That's how we met. He says it better. Go. Got the hayrides and wow, fat. I mean, ooh. Look at the pumpkins, look at the cucumbers, and I see it. See, in the distance, there's a howling wolf. Curtis is with the wolves. Yeah, just their interaction alone, it was just fun. Now, what happened was I was picking sunflowers, and I saw a flock of wolves, and I was like, people like me? You know, I thought there were people, so I went up to them. 
like this. I thought there were people, but there were wolves. No. So naturally, they attacked me. I'm bloody. This guy, he's with his wife. He's with. I'm with Mrs. my wife. We're no longer. Uh, she's no longer alive. Dead. So she is no longer with us. Cause he runs up. He starts punching the wolves. Right. Then his wife starts punching the wolves. Wolves killed her. Dead. Wolf killed my he wife. He saved me. Left his wife. I don't believe this story. Enjoyable. Like no, this, this is bullshit. From that moment, uh, we started immediately burying my wife. Yeah. You can't let that out. No, this because okay. this stink. Crazy does attract crazy. I would say that. In sickness and in death, she's dead. All right? And I, I'm, I'm a man of principles. Petey's crazy. Petey Pepper. He gets a shovel. I start digging with my claws. He starts digging with his claws. And I'm like, this guy's committed. How's her family? Great. I was actually just about to ask, how is your family? I remember as a kid, we were all really close. And then it just seems that the more we grew, we grew apart. You know? And... You look at that and you go, that's bad. But then if you look at it, it's actually kind of cool. Like a flower, when it blooms, the, the petals blow apart. You can't pry open a flower. You just kind of have to let it bloom, let it grow. We tracked down Curtis's family. Um, it wasn't easy because his mom is like a councilwoman. Trying to be mayor. Yeah. We had to lie, the, lie to her to get into the house. We tried contacting her, to, like we're making a movie about Curtis. She hung up the phone on us. So then we said, we're going to come by. And we want to talk about your campaign and we just kind of snuck in. You're making a movie of my son? Yep, and we're gonna see him This is camera. part of the movie? Mm-hmm. I, I thought you wanted to interview me about my campaign. Dad! Oh, man, he, that was a treat. That guy, Joe Jones, yeah. loves Sloppy Joes. Yeah, he, um, we yeah, don't, I don't think anything else. People just don't understand. They don't understand Sloppy Joes. There's something about the, uh, that, that, it's juicy with the sauce. It becomes part of you. It's like it's like making love when you have a sloppy joe in your hand. You can't let go of it. You can't put it down. It's like holding a beautiful woman. I feel like you're ashamed of your son, Curtis. Not true. No. Are you love him. I don't really talk to him much. I think he's a bit of an idiot. With the mask. Are you embarrassed by Curtis? Nope. I gave him a job once. Who wants to eat a sloppy joe with a fucking idiot wearing a mask? I fired him one day, not even two hours I had him there. We want to make like a poster of you and Curtis for your campaign. Would you do that? No, it sounds like a great idea, but it's really hard to get us on the same schedule these days. She was very, um... Annoyed that we were there. Someone asked you, is it cool if my son just wears a mask before you? You say, yeah, it's totally fine. It's totally normal. Kind of sweaty, don't you think, under there? So why don't you speak to your son and try and help him? Well, because he wears a fucking werewolf mask every goddamn day. Take that fucking mask off. You look like a fucking idiot. Everybody laughs at you, and they laugh at me. You're supposed to be my legacy. But he's embarrassing me. I'm running for goddamn mayor, for God's sakes. I'm supposed to be proud of you. And this is what you do. Why are you wearing that stupid thing? I've asked you that a hundred times. All I get is a stupid answer. I get a stupid answer that it's part of your being. It's your personality. It's 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 like uh, your spirit thing. What the fuck is that? Did you ever hear anything like that? How come you ain't wearing a mask? It's not fucking Halloween, Curtis. Wherever you are. It's a BLT sandwich. And I cover it with the Sloppy Joe sauce. The Sloppy Joe mix. For you're right, I don't talk to him. And you know what? This interview is over. Over. Out. Over and out. Out of my house now. And let yeah. go of my dog. Oh. Let oh. go of my dog. Let's go. Why is this out? Weird? Like when I was a kid, she would say stuff like, Hey guys, I hope you vote for me in this next election for your mom. And I'd be like, Mom, you're already my mom. You know, you're already my mom. And she'd be like, that's a vote then. You know, my dad is happy too, making Sloppy Joes. When I was a little kid, he didn't have a shop. He would just, he'd make the Sloppy Joes out of our house. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to put them together. And now he's got a shop and he's happy. My brother, he's always liked managing people and being a lawyer and wearing ties. Four years old, he put on his tie. He hasn't taken it off since. And no one's given him heat because we get it. We get it. Ben, you want to wear a tie? Have fun. And I feel like people are going to come around to this. Right now, they don't get it. But soon they will. They'll be like, you want to wear a wolf mask? As long as you're doing good, buddy. Then this is where everything fell apart. This is where it all went to crap. Um, we found out that Curtis has a brother. 
and we were able to contact him, but the meeting was hard to set up. We wanted to see what we could do, get them together, and just see how things would go from there. Yeah, and it was a mistake. This is a pretty cool house you got going on. It's a rental. Okay, how's yeah. it work been? Uh, it's been good, it's been good. I got a promotion. Yeah. Uh, yep, so uh, that's going well. That's got, cool. Uh, got some employees under me, which is nice. Yeah? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So um, I guess with your camera crew guys, you were doing some sort of work, you're filming something, so you, this is kind of your job? Did you get? These guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they saw me and they were like, you're an interesting guy, can we film you? And I was like, sure, let's do it. And um, So you're getting paid for this at least? If the documentary makes money, then I'll make some money, but right now, it's just getting the message out there. That's payment enough. Be positive. Be, be good to be. Right. So that's, 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 what I, that's what I keep telling people, right? Just be good to people. That's what I told my landlord. I was like, oh, just be good to people. But you know what? He still wanted to check. Isn't that weird? He still wanted my rent money. I'm telling you, that's why I'm, I'm out of here. I don't know if you know this, but I'm, I got this like, half acre of land. I got a little cabin. I don't want a landlord. So, you know, like, I, you could come anytime you want to hang out, help me plow the ground, help me plant the, the crops. It's oh, yeah? a good time. Yeah. Hang out with you on your on your plot of land and help you plant crops while you wear a werewolf mask. Dude, that's, come on. That sounds like a good time to you. That's fun. That sounds psychotic to me. That sounds like a nightmare I had. Just, see, that's your thing. You can't, you, you just look at this mask and you think this is who I am. Yeah, because if I were to spend the night at your house, I would wake up in the morning to that. But people get it that it's my face. Listen, I've talked to mom, dad, stepdad. They all get it. They all like the it. Thing. But it's not your face. It's a mask. That's the thing. Don't focus on the mask. You just fixate on the exterior things. You have to be of value, okay? You're not anything unless you're something of value to people, okay? Fuck off! You always say that kind of shit and it just it hurts me, man. Don't tell me to fuck off. Why? Don't, Don't tell me to fuck, fuck off. off. Yeah, F off. No! Yeah! I'm telling you that you can't just wear that mask yes, all I can. the time. I've been doing it for four years. I know you've been doing it for four years, and for four years I've had family call me and ask me about it. Mom calls me and asks me all the time. Every time we end the conversation, she goes, Oh, and did your brother take off that mask yet? She knows I'm not gonna take it off. Yeah, I, I know, but she time. wants you to. Everybody wants you to. Well, I can't do what everybody wants. I'd rather live the way I wanna live than live to just do what people want me to do. But you have to do something. You have to make money, okay? You can't just go around running around being this artsy, ridiculous guy, okay? Get a real job. Put on a shirt, put on a tie, go to work. This is what makes me happy. Why can't you just be happy? It's not all about you. You can't just make yourself happy. There's other people that you are responsible for. Who? I'm explaining. You are responsible to this family, to mom and dad. You could be a great guy. You really could. I you am really a could great be guy. a great guy. If you just take off the goddamn mask. You, say, you have no job. You have no life. You I don't fuck want around. A job. I don't want a life. I want to oh, do me. No, I know I you don't want a life. Me. I know you do because you just want to fuck around with this stupid fucking mask. I'm not fucking around. This is my message. This is who I am. Why don't you get that? You have been a drain on this family from the beginning. You, you contribute nothing. You don't have a job. You have no life. Please you, take it not off. Not anybody. No. Once, just no, once, just once, just take not it off. Take it off. And now take it off. Fuck off. I'm not taking this mask. Take it off. I thought we could be civil. Get off of me. Give me, give me the mask. Swear to God. Give me the mask. Oh. So it did. Uh, ben, it was tense. It got physical. Get, get off. Give it to me. That's my eye. What is that? Glue it on. Give me. And it got worse before it got better. At one point, we had to put down the cameras. We had to break it up because we were going at it. Ben actually ripped the mask off, and we we saw his face. We for the first time, Ed, no one had seen it for four years, but. We saw his face. Surprisingly clean cut. That's no, it's no, my man. Get off! Don't touch! Don't touch! Get away from me! Get off me! Come on! Get off me! Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Hey, hey, where you going? Curtis picked up the mask and just took off. Um, we lost him. Very, very quick, by the way. We, we could not catch up with him. There's no way of contacting Curtis. Anyway, he has no cell phone, nothing. So we had to find him, and we thought, what's the one place we'd find him at? Hey, where'd this all start? The, the woods. woods. Curtis, you alright? No, where are you going, man? Listen, I can't do this, man. Good luck to you and your documentary. I hope you get into festivals and stuff. Whatever money you make, keep it. But I, I can't, I can't do this. I'm just, I'm going out there. This is where I belong. I want to be out here, so I'm out. He was, I mean, he just wanted to spread love and be happy and spread positivity to the world, and he was doing it. Mm -hmm. He was. You know? And he's still out there. 
Yeah, it's still out there. So if you ever see a guy walking around a wolf mask, try not to judge him. Yeah, definitely going into it, we just saw a guy in a mask. And we thought, this is crazy, we should talk to him. And then we saw the guy under the mask. And we're like, oh, you're a really good person. And interviewing people around him, we were like, oh, you're, you're not good people. All these people judge Curtis for the mask. And they all didn't like him, they all hate him. They didn't see what was beyond the mask. And we were just as guilty as that. The only reason we were following him is because he had that mask on. We didn't really care about him what he had to say, but then we learned about him and, you know, he kind of changed the way I interact with people now. I always think of Curtis. Yeah, we did know that we weren't going to get to see him again, so we, w we wanted to just ask him, like, what, if there's one message you have, like, what, what would you like to say to us? I'd rather be happy than normal. Like a movie reel Going page by page On minimum wage Scraping by on our hands and feet And I cannot wait Till the end of the day Just so I can see your pretty face Cause without you here Yes, without you dear I'd just be a waste of space